in this video I'll be taking you along with me through the beautiful beautiful Kew Gardens. I've packed lots of videos so that you can draw inspiration and paint from there should you wish. I'll also be doing lots of painting and answering your questions about gouache. Hey welcome back to my channel. I make weekly art tutorials, paint alongs and vlogs. I was very kindly gifted some art supplies by Etchen. If you haven't already seen that video, then I will link it for you. One of the items that they gifted me was the Etcher accordion sketchbook. And to be perfectly honest, I saved it for a while and I gave it a lot of consideration in terms of trying to figure out what to create. But once I went to Kew Gardens, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And that is why I'm taking you along with me. Here I am in Kew Gardens. Um, I brought my painting stuff just in case, of course, but we'll see if I get to paint or if it will just be exploring around and drawing inspiration. I can't explain why, but I was instantly drawn to the Great Pagoda, which is this stunning structure here. It is so unique and truly commands attention in the middle of nature, it's just there, majestically standing. So even though I didn't have a lot of time in the garden, I just wanted to sit down and to quickly sketch it so that I could remember it. It was very challenging in terms of getting the perspective right and adding just enough detail to remember what it was but not so much detail that I either end up over committing time that I don't have or just adding extra details and overworking it because ultimately I still wanted to see the rest of the garden. So that was that quick sketch and from there I went into Temperate House which was truly stunning like a giant greenhouse and inspired my first piece in the accordion sketchbook. I was honestly at no loss of ideas because of my trip to Kew Gardens and like many of you in my previous video suggested I really wanted to do a continuous almost panoramic painting to represent my trip there and this staircase that felt like it came out of a fairy tale book I thought was the perfect way to start this sketchbook. I will create a separate video answering all the questions that you asked about gouache but to just address some of the main ones I had a lot of questions about materials. So in terms of my favourite gouache at the moment it is the Windsor & Newton designer gouache. I love this set. I have used um, the Himimiya gouache and I've also used some gouache from the works and I'll link that video up for you but the Windsor & Newton was just much better quality. I keep this in my stay wet palette that I've also made a video about and I will link down below for you and that is just because it's made my life so much easier and has made gouache so accessible I don't have to figure out how much paint to pour out on my palette and all the colours are so easily accessible. Other gouache brands that I haven't yet tried myself but come fairly highly recommended and are part of my wish list include the Holbein gouache, the M. Graham gouache as well as the Schmincke Horodam gouache and this will all very much depend on whereabouts in the world you are and which is most accessible for you and most affordable. There is also the Himimiya gouache set um, which is a good cheap option but isn't necessarily the best quality paint but you do get a lot of paint for that amount. I think it would be worth considering getting good quality gouache but less amounts. Quite a lot of them have like sample sets that you can get so that you can see if you actually like the gouache and you like how it behaves and take it from there. Or you can consider getting the Himimiya gouache or one of these sets that come with more gouache for a lower price point. Bearing in mind that it won't be the best quality but that being said you will get a lot of paint to play around with. So if price is what's stopping you or if you want to just have a lot of paint to experiment first before you commit to better quality then definitely consider those sets as well but check out that video and it will make more sense and you'll get a bit of a better idea as to the differences between them. I also got quite a few questions about colour mixing and more specifically how I mix my colours and how I mix a lot of my greens. So for the paintings I will actually be leaving the view of my palette up so that you can see the colours that I am mixing. It is sped up so it's not going to be perfect and this is something that I will make a video about in the future to go into more detail. But some of the key points that I hope that seeing my palette will illustrate is that one I really like to have variation so I will use multiple different colors I will use the Prussian blue most of the time when mixing my greens but sometimes I will use the primary green that's included in the set rather than mixing my own I added 
a lot of lemon yellow to make my greens really bright and really pop but then I also had some greens where I was adding either brown or like the tiniest tiniest bits of red because red is the complementary color of green to tone down the color and to make it more olivey and less um pop out in your face and more natural looking another thing is that I like to mix as I go along so you will see that as I'm going through the painting I will just keep playing around with the colors rather than pre-mixing my colors and starting to paint and there isn't a right or wrong way to do this it's just how I prefer to paint and then what you may also notice is that I like to add to the colors that I already have on my palette to mix the colors that I want. One of the benefits is that I think it makes my pieces more cohesive but one of the potential drawbacks is that if you're not careful you end up creating brown or grey over and over because you are essentially mixing the wrong colours together. With regards to the paper, I tend to like using watercolour paper just because I tend to do watercolour paintings for the most part so I have a lot of it but it will work on mixed media paper as well it will work if you use watercolour ground and paint on top of it but it's just better for me to have it on watercolour paper because I like to work with gouache in layers it worked so beautifully in the accordion sketchbook but to be perfectly honest I wouldn't normally be buying 100% watercolour paper for my gouache I would probably just use cellulose and reserve my 100% watercolour paper for my watercolor I also got lots of questions about brushes and I think brushes comes down to a personal preference in this video I'm using the etcher gouache brushes that I was very kindly gifted by them and to be perfectly honest they are the first officially branded gouache brushes that I have used for the most part what I like using is multi-purpose or acrylic brushes because they tend to be a bit stiffer so they can still handle water but they can also handle thick amounts of paint they don't leave streaks behind all I require is that the bristles don't come out and that they're a bit stiff and they handle water the etcher brushes were a lot softer than I'm used to they almost felt like slightly stiffer watercolor brushes on one hand it meant that I wasn't quite getting the right amount of precision when I was adding a lot of paint like thick gouache paint however it also meant that it was holding so much water and so much paint that one paint stroke could just keep going and going and going so this will just be down to personal preference. I loved this staircase I just thought it looked so nice and it was such a wonderful way to start the accordion sketchbook. To be perfectly honest I didn't plan out my piece as much as perhaps it would have made sense to do so I knew what I roughly wanted inside it but I didn't think as to what would follow on from page to page to page to page I was very much just going with it and looking through the photos that I had and the videos that I had and then deciding what I wanted to add honestly I think there is something about creating art and being an artist that makes you see the world differently like <laughs> I feel like ever since I've started painting I have started seeing so much beauty absolutely everywhere and I wanted to paint absolutely everything I found another place that would make a beautiful painting is it any surprise that after the fairy tale staircase the thing that inspired me most was this stunning waterfall I can't believe there's something like this in London. For this painting I wanted to embody the waterfall but as you may have gathered from a lot of my paintings I don't aim for photorealism just more something that will prompt the memory of my experience. Kew Gardens felt magical to me and that is something that I wanted to continue for the rest of the painting. As I mentioned I wasn't the best when it came to planning I knew that I wanted it to be a painting about my time in Kew Gardens but I didn't plan what would follow on from each painting <laughs> nor did I learn the lesson but one of the beauties of gouache is that it is opaque which means that you can layer and cover previous layers as long as the layer that you're layering on top of is dry and that the one that you are adding is thicker so it has more paint than the one underneath. In doing so I was able to create a smoother transition from the magical stairwell to the beautiful waterfall and then I could start adding details. If you're enjoying this video and the content that I'm creating thus far then please consider liking and subscribing as it makes a massive difference. Thank you.
This is one of my favorite paintings and not just because it has a waterfall but I think because of all the colors that are in there the way that I placed all the colors it really does feel quite magical and fairy tale esque to me and it really just reminds me of how excited I was when I saw that there was an indoor waterfall. And I think a lot of that was achieved by using a variation of colours from yellows to blues to greens to browns. They all came together to create this beautiful piece. So not only was there a giant greenhouse in Kew Gardens, there's another one that I'll show you shortly. But there were also art galleries and I went in one of them, which was very striking, but very uh, abstract. Like I didn't really understand it, although I loved the colours and I to be perfectly honest would love to do a piece using those color schemes to see what it would turn out like but that would be a project for the future i then saw the shop and had to stop because i wanted to check out some potential purchases although i didn't buy anything because i had to run and go to the next place which was palm house and this place was so hot like I don't even know how many times I talk about the heat in this video but it was so unreal so worth it I stayed there probably longer than I should have but again it was because it was so beautiful in another greenhouse and it is crazy hot in here so this greenhouse was the source of my next inspiration. Although one of the things that I struggled with with this one was trying to figure out how exactly I was going to encompass this jungle, this chaos into a painting. And so for this one, I went paradoxically for something quite simple, just doing some trees and some foliage to then lead on to the next thing that I saw and was obviously completely in love with again. <laughs> But first, did I tell you it was hot? God, hot, so hot. Oh my gosh. Still worth it though. The stairwells in Kew Gardens are what dreams are made of. Like, honestly, I love them so much and I wanted to paint them again, so I did. And to be perfectly honest, I suspect down the line I will paint them again and again and again because they are so beautiful but not only that so interesting to actually try to put together from a perspective point of view but I think that this piece nicely illustrates the importance of consistency when it comes to painting with gouache. As you can see I am able to lay a white paint on top of the darkest paint I have the Prussian blue and the reason that I'm able to do this without creating baby blue without reactivating the blue underneath is because the white that I am using is thicker than the blue layer that I did underneath it. I think I did this painting in three layers and essentially the first layer is very much watered down almost like watercolor gouache and this is just for me to practice color mixing to get rid of the white of the paper and to just get started. I will almost certainly cover this entire layer with a thicker layer of gouache moving forward but at least that's a good starting step for me. The next layer layer number two has more gouache and less water so it's thicker than the first layer and layer number three is thicker than layer number two and that means it has more paint and less water. Sometimes I will also do an extra layer, a fourth layer and this doesn't necessarily mean that I'm painting over every single area but it means that in a certain part I'm going over it for the fourth time and this will be thicker still and if need be you can just apply straight gouache with almost no water but bear in mind that I don't tend to like doing this a lot because gouache can crack if you layer it on way too thickly and across a large surface. Getting the right consistency and ensuring that the layer is completely dry before you paint on top of it is what will allow you to layer gouache effectively and getting the right consistency will be a thing of practicing. If you are reactivating the layer underneath which means that the colors are mixing together so for example in this instance I would be getting light blue then that means that the layer underneath is either not completely dry or that the layer you're trying to paint on top of it is too watery. If you're getting a white halo around your paint when you're using white or sometimes when you're using lighter colors it starts to fade then again it's too watery or it you it hasn't been mixed properly and there's a bit of binder in there. 
some colors will be more opaque than others so naturally white won't be necessarily as opaque as a darker color so for example when I'm doing this waterfall because I love waterfalls I just thought I would add it to the previous painting I had to do it in multiple layers and that's okay another reason that you may have to do multiple layers or that I choose to is because gouache will shift <laughs> the colors will change and what that means is that your darker colors will dry lighter and your lighter colors will dry darker so quite often I will have to go back and touch things up to really get the contrast that I want so I will make my Prussian blue even darker my shadows darker and then make my brightest of bright areas even brighter I don't think that there is um, a perfect way to get around it. I think there are just certain things that you can bear in mind when you're painting to be aware of it. And that is that, for example, if you're going to do a background and you know that you need a lot of a color, just mix it beforehand because otherwise it will be next to impossible for you to get that same color again. And also just being mindful that you may need multiple layers and to try to bear the color shift in mind and make your dark colors even darker. <laughs> and your light colors even lighter. If you're a Kofi member, just a heads up that I have made a separate video highlighting the top three techniques that I use for painting with gouache, but more specifically going through some exercises that will help you with this. And thank you so much for supporting the channel. On top of that, I have also created a reference pack full of some of my favorite pictures from my time in Kew Garden that you can use as references for your own art if you would like, and I will leave the link down below in the description for you. The reference pack is an exclusive perk, but as you have gathered, I have added so many videos and clips of Kew Gardens so that this may be a form of inspiration for you as well. So if you want to just freeze and paint something, then feel free to do so. As I kind of alluded to earlier, I wanted each page to be a piece of art on their own, but I also wanted it to tell a story when opened up and to kind of be a continuous painting when opened up, which is why I would then every so often open the accordion sketchbook to then add details to tie everything together, ensuring that I'm using the same color schemes as well. I feel like I should do a before and after I entered here. Can you tell this is before and yeah this is after <laughs> to be honest I stayed longer than I should have just because I wanted to take lots of pictures and lots of videos and really soak it all up and it was a nice kind of heat I guess this next painting was challenging and I think more so because of the perspective like I mentioned when I was doing the sketching of it and also just trying to figure out how much detail to add and how much detail to omit which is something that is always um, a consideration when you're painting I was also trying to figure out how I was going to tie the two pages together which as I've mentioned I hadn't been the best at pre-planning and then also trying to depict the shadows within the structure itself and just the detail and the perspective to be perfectly honest they were the main issues. The way that I tackled it was honestly just trying to think of simple shapes. I initially tried to sketch out the entire structure and I gave up halfway because it just wasn't really adding much it was just over complicating things so I started thinking of it as blocks of <laughs> as blocks of rectangles and somewhat like other types of oblongs and triangles and that is how I ended up putting this whole thing together so just looking at it in the simplest shape that I could see instead of trying to fixate on all the details that this stunning piece had and to be perfectly honest I really really liked how it turned out I felt like I was able to capture it and capture the main important parts of it without feeling overwhelmed without spending like hours and hours and hours and I got the shadows down you know I love trying to get like shadows and highlights and I think that the shadows worked out very nicely in this piece so honestly I had no complaints and on top of that I also really liked the fact that this entire sketchbook thus far has had elements of the outside as well as the inside like they shouldn't necessarily be together like you know stairs in a forest and then a waterfall inside a greenhouse the whole thing so although this was outside I just felt like it was such a monumental part of Kew Gardens that I couldn't leave it out. I considered this being the last painting but then my sister pointed out and to be perfectly honest I knew that I hadn't really tied the piece together it would just be I don't know it didn't quite seem finished and for me the way to finish it was to add one of my favorite parts I again and that was the waterfall that I saw within the temperate house.
this time staying a bit truer to the colours by adding quite a bit of browns to my greens. And this is it. This is my representation of my trip to Kew Gardens. This is some of my favourite bits from it. And to be perfectly honest, there is still so much more that I want to do, but I almost felt like this piece in itself was finished. Can I just say that despite my apprehension about having an accordion sketchbook and not knowing what I would create in it, I had such a good time and I can honestly say that I would have never created a piece like this were it not for the fact that I had the space to do so in the accordion sketchbook. It had me thinking about differently just how to put the whole piece together and I love, 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 love the results. They are beautiful on their own and they are even more beautiful together. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the rest of the sketchbook, both the end of it and the back of it, but honestly you guys left such great ideas in the comment section of the previous video so I'm definitely going to be going there for inspiration. Part of me is thinking of keeping the Kew Gardens theme but perhaps just doing smaller paintings and also doing some watercolour paintings rather than having a panoramic sketchbook. So just creating multiple sketchbooks in at one. Really love to do like some paintings of the lily ponds as well as some of the florals like the roses especially and also just the extra little details that I saw all over the garden. While there I felt so inspired that I decided to sit down and pull out my watercolours and also do a quick painting. I found a nice quiet spot with a beautiful view. I completely ignored the clouds coming in which were a clear sign that it was going to rain and I started painting. I had my Pro Art watercolour brush, my Cotman Winsor & Newton watercolours and then I was painting in my Moleskin watercolour sketchbook. So this is as far as I was able to get before it started raining and I had to go home. If you are still watching then you are a real MVP and I really 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 appreciate you. Let me know that you're still watching by telling me which part of the painting was your favourite. Is it the bottom of the stairwell that we started off with? Is it the waterfall that followed it? Is it the second waterfall? Is it the top of the stairwell? Was it the pagoda or was it the very final waterfall? If you're interested in learning about gouache then definitely check out my Kofi and the video that I created where I compare my Winsor & Newton with the Himimiya and the gouache from the works. And if you're curious about what Etcher gifted me and how to use the accordion sketchbook then check out my last video which I'll link for you. Thank you so so much and I will see you next week. Bye! Yeah. <laughs>